Fred Murad, again, one of the other gentlemen who shared the Nobel Prize for the discovery of nitric oxide, uh, hired me, gave me my first faculty position, and then for the first year, all I did was go in the lab. Mm -hmm. I had the instrumentation, the analytical equipment that I could <clears throat> really produce compositions of matter that could produce nitric oxide. So I figured okay. out a way to put these components together to generate a certain amount of nitric oxide that would basically restore normal nitric oxide production in the human. Hmm. That was the game changer. I started filing patents. I you know, published or, or submitted dozens of invention disclosures to the university. Their lawyers would look at it, submit patents, file patents. Patents started being issued. And then, as we discussed before, yeah. then it was like, I thought I'd solve this great mystery and hoping to reap the benefits of yeah. that. And then it was like the most anticlimactic period of yeah. my life. It was like phase like, one of it was like, phase, like, <laughs> nothing's oh, the happening. rest of the journey. Yeah. Nothing's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that really what shifted kind of my career path. And then, you know, I, I, I left academia many years ago because there's conflicts of interest issues that you got to manage. If you've got a okay. for-profit company and you're doing research and you're employed by the university, then you have to manage conflicts of interest and it became too overwhelming. I mean, they basically okay. want to handcuff you and prevent you from, from innovating and doing research. But that's just part of the system. It's, it's in place for a reason. But mm -hmm. everything happens. I'm a firm believer that everything happens in your life at the right time for a specific reason. and allows us to pivot and take a new direction that perhaps we didn't plan or even okay. intended. But I look back now, and the longer I live, the more I realize that how little control I had really over my life and the okay. decisions. I think people, God put people and places and incidents and situations in my life yeah. at specific times to lead me down a very specific path. Yeah. God's plan. And here we are today, here we are. 25 years later, and having a happy hour cocktail. <laughs> yeah, here. good times, right? <laughs> You know, it's intriguing to me, um, and maybe you can tell our viewers more about just the basics of nitric oxide, but like you said, it's a gas. And with it being in the body, you know, how was it actually discovered in the first place? And then I, I'd like to know more about how you discovered the ingredients in which would actually work as a yeah. consumable product. You know, the discovery of nitric oxide is a very interesting story, and it's really where two... Mm -hmm really three independent lines of research came together. Kind of isolated discoveries in their own right, but when you put the pieces of that puzzle together, it really told the complete story of, of nitric oxide. One of the most important discoveries in the history of vascular <clears throat> biology was Bob Furchcott in 1980. He discovered that our endothelial cells, the cells that line all the blood vessels throughout the body, when activated, released a substance that causes the blood vessels to relax. And he published okay. this in 1980 and he called what, this... What was the substance? was called endothelium derived relaxing factor huh. so he named it for what it did not for what it was okay right yeah. so it was a relaxing factor released by the endothelial cells mm -hmm. so no one knew what this was three years earlier Fred Muir had discovered that drugs like nitroglycerin that were used for the treatment of acute mm -hmm. angina for coronary artery disease would dilate the blood vessels because they released nitric oxide activated a, mm -hmm. a second messenger so then after 1980 the race was on what is EDRF then yeah. seven years later, it was realized that EDRF is nitric oxide. And that was a surprise. And the Nobel Committee basically informed us that the, the signal transduction by a gas is a completely new paradigm in signaling. Hmm. So nitric oxide is produced by the lining of the blood vessel. It's a gas. Once it's produced, it's gone in less than a second. But during that okay. second it's around, it activates a number of signaling pathways. Okay. So it starts the domino effect. Nitric oxide knocks over the first domino then everything else takes place from that. Okay. But without nitric oxide, you don't get the cascade. You don't get the signaling. You don't get the domino effect.